hello and welcome to voice tv nigeria thank you for always watching and thank you for joining me once again i am patience Obot, and today's matters arising is still on african development popular african activist dr arikana have come out to say africans are not totally united as they are expected to be in terms of civilization and putting in their financial resources our problem goes back to the mind. Our ability to solve our problems, it starts with the mind. I'm sorry to say, but it is saddening, it is disappointing, it is frustrating. And as a mother, you look at it and say, my children, what happened? Why can't we wake up from this slumber? Why can't we wake up and say enough is enough? We got to come together. We've got to trust each other and we've got to protect and defend each other against these invaders. How long are we going to continue to mistrust each other, to not believe in each other? How long are we going to continue to be stupid and continue to do the same things over and over and expecting a different result? Albert Einstein called it insanity. I would hope we can all look in the mirror and say insanity no more. Prior to independence, using our financial resources together, using an example of the Jewish nation, that they came together to forge a uniformity to, for the betterment of their country. But one thing was lacking, which is the financial resources. And when they discovered that, that became the secret weapon for the Israelites. And today, the Jewish nation are recognized as the number one superpower nation in the world today. Indirectly, they control the world. We, Africa, we can also control the world if we want to, but we need to fix our problems. We need to start from ourselves. When are we going to have one language? We speak Francophone, we speak Anglophone. We are neither here, we are neither there. We're just sitting on the fence. When are we going to come out and let these people know that yes, Africa means business and Africans can stand as a continent, as a solid, strong continent on its own and be at the helm of affair of world superpowers. But what do you think? But I want you to watch this video. That in 1945, 13 Jewish men met in the library. They didn't even have a place to meet. This was soon after Holocaust. The ideas they came up with during that meeting were based on two facts, two realizations that there was a need for them to unite, for them to speak with one voice when it comes to issues pertaining to them and their country. They also realized that their unity was useless if they did not back it up with financial resources. So that is all they did. They united. They said, we may not like each other as individuals, but when it comes to their Jewishness, when it comes to Israel, they stick together like super glue. They also pulled out their financial resources. If I may stand, stop for a second, use Israel as an example and the Jewish people. The Jewish people own this little bitty tiny little piece of land, which is a desert. There's only 15 million Jews around the world. Compared to Africa, we have the largest land mass on earth, richest continent on earth, and over 400 million African diaspora. The Jews, with their little bitty country that is a desert, Financially, they control the world, whether you like it or not. When those Americans in Charlottesville were holding their tiki torches, talking about the Jews will not replace us, you never saw a single Jewish man on television complaining. They complain with their finances. Their dollars speak for them. Jews do not go and borrow money from anybody. They fund themselves. They're probably the most powerful people financially. Their money speaks for them. What do we do instead when George Floyd gets killed and many others, we're on the street, we make noise and that's it. If everybody that protested could put a dollar 
and say, yes, we want to protest, but we're also going to do something about it. Now we could get somewhere. We could get somewhere. Translate those voices into finances. Let's make that bridge. Let's create that bridge. Let's take a page from the Jews. Let's understand that as black people, we are the most endangered species on earth. Let's also make a commitment that how long are we going to allow this carnage to go on? How long are we going to continue to be stupid? It's about the finances, my brothers and sisters. If we do not bring our finances together, if we do not understand that my $85 a month for a year is an investment in not only myself, but my children, my grandchildren, and generations to come, then who are we? What is the solution? Understand that the brain drain out of Africa started over 400 years ago with the children of Africa who were being taken out of Africa as slaves. Remember when they were choosing which Africans to take out as slaves, they chose the fittest. This matters that who they felt would sustain and survive the rigorous journey across the Atlantic, followed by those who have left Africa in recent years in search of greener pastures, some running away from famine and wars. But the end result is Africans around the world are building other nations while we are allowing our beloved continent to languish or be exploited. The colonizers have been in Africa for centuries. All they have succeeded at doing is building infrastructure designed to do nothing but extract resources out of Africa. That's all they have done, and that's all they plan to continue to do. We're the only ones who can change that paradigm. And that means the African diaspora must wake up. That means the African diaspora must understand what is really going on and not understand Africa from the eyes of the colonizers, from the eyes of the media that have chosen to paint Africa as a diseased and dying continent in need of rescue. Let's understand our Africa as African diaspora. Let's understand our role. It's very difficult for African an African businessman in Malawi, in Botswana, to think continental. They're struggling to make a living in that little bitty country with all the restrictions and the difficulties of reaching to the next to the country next door to then ask that same businessman to think continental. But the people who can help with that bridge, the people who are already integrated in a way, people who can come to Africa with an integrated mind are the children of Africa in the diaspora. Like I said before, a million diaspora with a thousand dollars, that's a billion dollars. A billion dollars is a lot of money. And then you take that one billion, let's do it a year, after, year in and year out. Financial resources, we need to pull our funds together. We need to begin to look at our continent as a continent. What do the market women in Africa need today? How do we begin to make it possible for a market woman in Nigeria to sell to the market woman in Kenya what she cannot find in Kenya but is in Nigeria? How do we begin to loosen those trade barriers? It's a level one. I'm hoping that the African continent of free trade area can begin to address those issues. But looking at what we have right now, when you see countries still blocking borders, still making it difficult, difficult for, country, for Africans to travel uh, freely around the continent, all of our challenges, if you begin to understand them, they all go back to the mind. We must open up our Africa. We need a single African currency. It's just that simple. We can't talk about the AFCFTA and still have 54, I mean, 44 different currencies. We can't talk about uh, a single Africa if we still have to carry a passport to travel around our country. We can't talk about progress within Africa if we still are having to fight all these various wars in the different countries as little bit different uh, military. Africa needs to truly begin to look at what are the needs of the continent? How do we move 
1.27 billion people. Let's have a strategy for that. How do we feed 1.27 billion people? Let's have a strategy for that. How do we house? How do we clothe 1.27 billion people? That thinking outside the box is what's really going to give us the results that we desire. But as long as Togo is strategizing for Togo, as long as Djibouti is strategizing for Djibouti, we are defeated before the game even begins. And that's exactly where they want us to be. That's exactly where they put us with the Berlin Conference. And that's why it saddens me to think of 130 years later since the Berlin Conference, we're still suffering from the effects of the Berlin Conference. So again, our challenges, while there are many, there are challenges that we can address. But for us to be able to address these simple challenges, like border issues, need for a passport, single currency, single monetary policy, single stock exchange, basic things that we should just do automatically, it goes back to the mind because we get so divided. The French are coming in, if you're Francophone, so to speak, why do we even call ourselves Francophone? If we're Anglophone, look at ECOWAS and the ECHO in West Africa. They can't come to an agreement on something that is so obvious and so terribly needed. I don't want to sound like a broken record. Our problem goes back to the mind. Our ability to solve our problems, it starts with the mind. I'm sorry to say, but it is saddening, it is disappointing, it is frustrating. And as a mother, you look at it and say, my children, what happened? Why can't we wake up from this slumber? Why can't we wake up and say enough is enough? We got to come together. We got to trust each other. And we've got to protect and defend each other against these invaders. How long are we going to continue to mistrust each other, to not believe in each other? How long are we going to continue to be stupid and continue to do the same things over and over and expecting a different result? Albert Einstein called it insanity. I would hope we can all look in the mirror and say insanity no more. Prior to independence, if you were colonized by the British, those are British companies. If you were colonized by the uh, Portuguese, by the Germans, by the French, those are the major employers in your country. At independence, they just lay low, but they've never left. They're still mining. They're still running most of the industry. 75% of the minerals being traded at the, at the London Stock Exchange are coming from Africa. So we need to strategize and see how we can get into manufacturing, get into mining, those pillars of development that are currently owned by the same people who have been oppressing us. How do we strategize to get ourselves into ownership of the pillars of development? Because we can talk all we want, but if we don't get into these sectors, we are always going to be noisemakers. I like to agree with Professor Lumumba when he says he doesn't blame the Chinese. The Chinese are taking advantage of our Africa because we are missing in action. I was talking to the managing director for the Zambian Development Agency. He said, Ambassador, every day I go to work, I have Chinese lined up outside my office. Not even Zambians are lining up, let alone Africans or African diaspora. So what are we supposed to do? We need development in our countries, but our people are not coming in to take advantage of the opportunities. That's one. The other issue is a lot of these contracts are contractor funded. And that brings us to issue problem number two. So not only are we not organized in these meaningful associations, we also don't have the funding. Because if we were to be organized meaningfully, we could then pull our resources together. So we're defeated because we don't have the funding to participate in the bidding process for these contracts. 
So where are the opportunities? The opportunities start with the realization that where we are defeated is unity of purpose. Having associations that we can pull our funds together so we can realize that when we begin to compete financially, we can begin to take over those pillars of development within our countries. The way things are today, it is very difficult for us as Africans to get into those areas, those sectors, those pillars of development, because we are defeated financially. We must understand that the one thing that was denied black people around the globe, no matter where you see us, it could be in Papua New Guinea, it could be in Brazil, in Africa, in the United States, in Europe, in China. The one thing that we were denied is economic liberation. That was intentional. How then do we regroup and build our own financial nucleus? Because as long as we're still having an idea and going to them for funding, we're still enslaved. So it goes back to how do we create those meaningful relationships? It goes back to what we are doing as ADDI,